Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. So we're up bright and early this morning. We're actually in before eight o'clock. So for a lot of people, that won't be a big thing. But for me, it really actually is. Waking up this early made me think about strength. You know, to do things such as this. Getting up, having a 12 hour shift at the brewery. And I realized the strength I needed was probably espresso strength so that's what we're going to do nothing like kicking off the morning with freshly ground well out of a bag espresso to keep you going oh yes oh look at the creamy goodness I'm definitely going to be in the mood for some more painting. Ain't that the truth? <coughs> oh, I'm going to have to edit that sneeze out as well, I think. Mm. Coffee. So, yes. 7.46, I'm not kidding. And we've got virgin floor. I love it. But I'm not gonna obviously look a gift horse in the mouth. While we've got everything to the side, I'm definitely gonna put a second coat on here today so that everything under the brew kit is absolutely bulletproof in terms of durability. And if we walk this way, past all of the, uh, yeah we've had the fans on all night to dry it, past all of the equipment, we've also got Virgin Workshop Floor, oh, it really makes me want to crack on with the jobs when I see something as good as this, it's making me actually want to paint the walls as well believe it or not, I think that'll make all the tools stand out a little bit more. We'll see anyway, we've got lots of jobs to do today. That's not high on the list, but if indeed I paint the floor out there and I find I'm struggling to do any other jobs, then we'll crack out the magnolia and we'll do these bricks as well. I think they'll look a lot nicer painted white than there. Uh, yeah, I just don't like the, the mucky brick look anymore because they're not. it's not an attractive brick wall, is it? Let's face it. It's an old and ropey one. The incessant buzzing of the fans. We have the second coat down and it went down well, spread nicely. And it didn't lift any, other, any of the other coat. That's always a good indication. If when you're rolling it out and it starts to pull up little flecks of the previous coat, then you know you've got a problem. So this should last us at least 18 months before we have to recoat. So I'm gonna give it a full day today and overnight to dry. And this paint should cure within seven days, but I think I'll be able to at least put the tanks back within that time scale. And while we've got the tanks disconnected and to the side, I'm going to revisit the heating, particularly on tank three. So we're gonna be taking the cladding off finding the heat jacket which is here and exploring whether we can put some underfloor heating cables in its place to hopefully increase the heating efficiency of the tanks so these blankets give us around 40 watts of heating power which ain't a lot but the underfloor heating gives as much as 150 watts per square meter so hopefully that will completely be a game changer. If we put a couple of square meters in each tank, then we've got a fair old, you know, fair old amount of heat to go in there and hopefully, hopefully uh, we'll be able to do diacetyl rests and whatnot uh, without any problems then. But we'll see. I've got the cable from tool station in this box and an RCD just in case but before we get into this 
I have to replace all this lot into the workshop. So we've been along to Tool Station and picked up a box of this stuff. That's the brand Kilmer Matt. This is one and a half square meters, 225 watts of heating power, underfloor heating cable. And the idea behind this is, well, it's, uh, it's a dramatic increase on heating capacity for the tanks to allow us to do a diastole rest, which at the moment we can't get to with the uh, heating blankets. And here's one of them. So these are only 40 watt max output and actually they self-regulate as well so they won't get hotter and hotter they'll just throttle down and increase the resistance and have less heat or decrease the resistance and have less heat over time so you get diminishing returns by using them I found out and although we can sustain the temperature of a tank we can't increase the temperature of a tank which is a real problem in the winter when we want to do diastole rests so this seemed like the ideal size I put it through a calculator on the internet to warm up 600 litres of beer with 225 watts will take approximately 18 hours and if you put this and that's from 18 degrees up to 22 so if we put this on the tank and it's got 500 litres in the extra 100 litres is to compensate for the steel and hopefully we can get this to work so we've taken the old blanket off we just have to remove the controller and then I've got to take half of the tank panelling away I've numbered them under where the banding will be so we'll be able to put them back on in the correct order and hopefully we'll be able to zigzag this mesh onto the tank without crossing over itself because they're points that could potentially overheat so I know this is designed to be laid in the ground in concrete but it is insulated with it's basically an armored cable for want of a better word you can see that there so uh, we shouldn't have any problems with fault to ground and if we do it should trip the GFU or the uh, residual current device no problem so I'm gonna go ahead and continue to strip off insulation and panels and get this re-kitted out so if we do this one at a time it shouldn't be too expensive for us they're 41 quid and it shouldn't take up too much time because one tank at a time will do all eight tanks in eight days or thereabouts so that's the plan fingers crossed this works might be a different battery replacement there so yeah as I was saying it might be a different kettle of fish with these tanks because there's more cone on these tanks so we may have to strip the whole lot all the way around which will be a real ball ache frankly but we'll see if we have to do it we have to do it it would be nice to have put some on the cone as well so the heat can radiate up and that's what I'm going to do with this I'm going to try to concentrate the majority of the heating cable to the bottom of the tank so it's going to be always submerged or always where the beer is and not necessarily sat up in no man's land where the headspace is so I'm going to continue to remove these panels and uh, we'll see how the installation goes. I've killed the fans, <laughs> it's not crashing the audio as badly. This one's not as loud as the other one. So there's the tank, looks a little bit different now. The warning colour of red all over the place. So, give you an idea of uh, how safe this is. We've got screws holding these boards on but if you look in there the screws stop there and there's that much distance between the screw and the tank wall there's a 2x2 two two to give you an idea of the distance there it's quite a lot and then once all the packer is in there as well there's no danger of these tiny little stubby screws coming anywhere near anywhere near the uh, 
the heating cable but we've pinned it back anyway with masking tape and what have you and then on top of that we're going to put the insulation back in that should press it all back to the tank and then there's only one place that the heat can escape and that is going to be into the beer so that's the plan managed to get it on i didn't think i was going to at the time but uh, in the end i had to take it off of the netting and do my own little swirly pattern which it says you can do on the instructions anyway but we do things our own way don't we here yes of course we do so i'm going to get the cladding back on get the tank put back together hopefully that's not too much of a difficult job most of the hard work's already done because the framework is in place and then I'm going to fire it up and see what kind of performance we get out of it. We'll chuck the infrared thing in the inside and see if it heats the metal up or indeed see if it trips the electric. Right we've got the insulation on and we're giving it some testing whilst it is in situ and before we fully clad it so 990 milliamps or one amp or 240 watts of power is going into that heating cable at the moment and if I can find the gun it's over here look there we go so let's first climb up the steps and have a look what we've got in the tank so tank wall no heating 19 20 degrees so it is radiating across tank wall with heating 26 and climbing 27 26 27 and yep it's hot to the touch so obviously when there's beer in there that beer will be dissipating that heat and it will be going all over the place and then in here I've been keeping my eye on this reading because this is the maximum heat that the cable is going to get up to behind the insulation and we're looking at about 60 to 70 degrees centigrade and that's been pretty stable for the past 10 minutes or so now so I keep coming back and checking that temperature and it doesn't seem to be getting over 70 there we go 68.9 70 oh no dropping down again so yeah 70 seems to be the top end of the range uh, which is a good thing that means we're not going to get a runaway heating effect 72 that's the highest read I've got so obviously when that's full of beer that's going to be wicking the heat away the insulation is not flammable we've got it on a a residual current circuit breaker and the whole system is on a mains circuit breaker an MCB so we're protected electronically we should be protected from any shorts and fire now I'm doing this as a professional wink wink but uh, I don't advise you do this and if you do it's certainly off your own back so we've got the one tank we're going to be testing this we're going to be testing the balls off it before we go and do the rest of the tanks because I'm aware that we are putting a resistive electrical cable inside a wooden tank but I'm confident that the result is going to be what we're looking for of course we're dealing with a lot more heat than we were with the electric blankets so the proof of the pudding is in the eating as they say so I'm going to continue to put the uh, cladding back on. I'm going to take a resistance reading on the end of the two cables as well and we'll test that when the cladding's on and uh, we'll test that periodically and if it remains the same then we know we don't have any shorts on the cable and uh, that's one way of testing the circuit for electrical stability anyway. We're going to have to harvest some yeast soon, all the beers are finished so uh, we're in new cable, new wire into the box thermostat repositioned in the correct position it's like we've got loops of heating cable going like round there like that 
So that'll be reading the tank temp, not necessarily the beer temp. So we will use the tilts to uh, indicate the beer temp and we'll just play it by ear. But what I wanted was the um, STC to turn off the heating relay when it noticed it getting hot. So um, it's just another tier of safety there. Now I'm not worried about this. We've all used the homebrew heating belts. It's exactly the same principle. It's a resistive wire which generates heat because of resistance. I'm quite comfortable using it. I just want to make sure because the kids come in here that everything is earthed, earthed, earthed to high heaven. And if there is a fault, then it's always going to be a fault to ground, which will of course trip off the RCD, God forbid. So uh, belt, buckles, braces, straight jacket, the freaking works with this just uh, because it is electrics. Don't mind plumbing so much, a leaky pipe ain't gonna kill you, but a leaky electric cable just might. Right, that is put to bed. I can't test it because the wire is over there, but I've taken the readings and uh, the resistance on the heating element is 242 ohms. Sherlock Ohms. I don't think I've got the instruction manual down here, but if I show you it, you'll see that we are within said parameters, so to speak. Here's the booklet. So let's just pop open the booklet before we call it a day. And this is a guide, so you're meant to take your own reading and record it, which I have. I've written it on the inside of the box. But for one and a half meter of cable, 225 watts, one amp, which we saw it was drawing 0 0.990 milliamps, and, uh, no amps, should I say, 990 milliamps, and 235 ohms, we've got 242, that's within, plus or minus 10%. We're good. So another day in the bag, folks. Yes, so if this works, which I fully anticipate it will, then that means we can do diastole rests on FV1. While I've got FV1 out as well, I am going to be changing this valve, or at least testing it, because I think it might be leaky. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. But either way, we're going to be testing it. And if it is uh, not closing correctly, we'll be changing it out and I'll have to I'll have to do that another day because the valves that I want are over there on the other side of the wet paint and those valves over there are going to be exchanged for the valves that we've spoken about earlier on in the vlog which are these orange ones so these are good because they unscrew. As I've said, we've also got some more spray balls, rotating spray balls, half inch from China, tenner each, something daft, ridiculously cheap. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up, folks. Otherwise, we're going to be here talking all day and we're going to be back in the brewery tomorrow when we'll get those valves exchanged and we'll have to put all the brew kit back where it belongs in that freshly painted space. I'm telling you though, it doesn't it look fresh? We'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. <laughs>